Hey, hello, everybody. Welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be with you. And uh, as usual, the first thing that we're going to do is to, to check about the platform, okay? So this is the class of tonight. Actually, it's going to be this one. And this is the question. So you can participate into that one. And remember to finish the exercise for uh, 15. Hay que ir terminando los ejercicios. Recordemos que el viernes, no, el sábado en la mañana yo estaré enviando las notas en esa forma. Entonces espero que todos vayan al día con esto. Ok, eh, si hay algún problema, pues me avisan. La otra semana, el viernes, estaríamos ya finalizando este módulo. Ok, very good. So, we are going to check the attendance. Let's see. Okay, let me check here. Okay. Abel Edenilson Salazar Melara. Abigail Elizabeth Flores Hernández. Present teacher. Good. Carlos Humberto Estrada Escobar. Elia Yanira Canizales Blanco. Francisco Ernesto Acuña Rivera. Gabriel Esaú Melara Rosales. Gisela Beatriz Hernández Morales. Joana Saraí Maldonado González. Carla Daniela Molina Cruz. Present. Carla Ivania Anaya Ancheta. Present, teacher. Good. Carla Lorena Mendoza Guevara. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Kevin Ramiro Vázquez Pineda. Laura Guadalupe Fuentes de Meléndez. Present, teacher. Ah, okay, good. Marilyn Alejandra Grande Pérez. Present. Good. Mario Ernesto López Ramírez. Present. Good. Mirna Janet Ángel de Castro. Present teacher. Good. Roberto Emilio González Cruz. Santos Cristina Cerrito de Ruiz. Present teacher. Good. Saúl Adalberto Cornejo Valdés. Present. Good. Jocelyn Stephanie Roldán Castaneda. Okay, perfect. So we are going to start the class. Nice. Hemos visto bastantes cosas interesantes estos días. El presente perfecto, vimos los idioms, phrasal verbs. Ahora la clase sería eh, siempre como idioms, la segunda parte de los idioms. Entonces vamos a hacer, o vamos a ver unos adicionales y luego vamos a, a continuar con el libro. Let me just check. This is it. Okay. Okay, let me then just check. Okay. We're going to start with a video. Let's see how it goes. Este es de varios idioms y es, uh, es interesante porque es explicado por alguien nativo. So, let's pay attention and then you tell me what you understand on this one. Here we go. Hi, everyone. I'm Arnel. And today we're going to look at 10 important idioms you can use every day. You can use them 
and you'll hear them. So, are today's idioms formal or informal? I would say informal and neutral. They're very conversational. You can use them with family, friends, and even at work. I've divided this lesson into three conversations. The receptionist, the boss, and the long day. Thank you for calling this clinic. Okay, how can I help you today? Yes, that's correct. So sorry, I'll be with you in a minute. Oh, no problem, take your time. Idiom number one, take your time. Definition, don't rush, I'm happy to wait. Imagine you have a Skype or a Zoom meeting. Before the meeting, the other person messages you. Sorry, I need one more minute. You can write back, take your time. This means I'm happy to wait. It's a very polite thing to say. What's with this weather? I've never seen such awful weather before. <laughs> you can say that again. It's been raining for weeks, hasn't it? Idiom number two. You can say that again. Definition, I completely agree with you. Let's look at the pronunciation. Okay, you can say, that's fine. You can say, you can say that again. You can say that again. I completely agree with you. And remember, the special thing about idioms is they are not literal, meaning you cannot translate an idiom word for word. Remember that during this lesson, you can say that again, doesn't mean say something again. These meetings are a waste of time. Ugh. You can say that again. These meetings are a waste of time. Name, please. Arnell, I have an appointment at three with a Dr. Bean, I think. Oh, Dr. Bean really is the nicest doctor in the whole world. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. I'll take your word for it. Definition. I believe you because I don't have any information. I've never met Dr. Beam. I have to trust you. You don't want to go to that restaurant. Take my word for it. Believe me. You can see, if you want to show you believe someone, you can say, I'll take your word for it. I'll take your word for it. If you want someone to believe you, we often just say, take my word for it. Do you have any plans for the weekend? Yeah, um, actually I have, I have to finish two essays and I have to help my roommate move. It sounds like you have your work cut out for you. Yeah. You have your work cut out for you. You have your work cut out for you. Definition. Wow, you will be very busy. You have your work cut out for you is, is a way to show sympathy. Wow, you're going to be really busy. For example, did you hear? Eric is going to renovate that old house on Westwood Drive. Really? Whew. He has his work cut out for him. He's going to be really busy. Okay, imagine I'm a boss and I get a message from an employee. Mm, Ted, and it's Friday morning. Sorry, I can't come in today. I don't feel well. Huh. Hmm. That message is the last straw. Definition. After many bad things, this is a final thing. No more. Because look! Let's, let's go back. Last week. Sorry, I'm sick. I'm not coming in. Also last week. 
I'll be 45 minutes late. Two weeks ago, my dog is sick. What? Today's message is the last straw. This is actually a really interesting idiom. It comes from the story, the straw that broke the camel's back. Okay, here is a camel and this is straw and a piece of straw. Yes, this is also a straw. So this camel is already carrying a lot, right? This camel is stressed. I'm gonna add one more piece of straw. It was the straw that broke the camel's back. It was the last straw. Why did Will and Gina break up? Well, you know how Gina's always late, right? Well, she was over an hour late for Will's work dinner. I think that was the last straw. You can see, after many times, this was the last time. And then they broke up. Let's get back to Ted. Okay, he's constantly late. And he's always sick. I might need to fire him. Well, actually, he's only 18 and this is his first job. I should probably cut him some slack. I should cut him some slack. Definition. Don't be so critical. Oh, I hate this software. I suck at technology. Cut yourself some slack. You just started using it. Don't be so critical. Okay, so back to Ted again. Hmm. I need to cut him some slack. So I won't fire him, but I will speak to him. I might need to fire him in the future, but I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. I am here and my bridge is way over there and my bridge is a potential problem do i need to deal with it now no i'll cross that bridge i'll deal with the problem if it comes up we might need to cancel the barbecue it might rain let's cross that bridge when we come to it the weather looks fine I'll cross that bridge when I come to it, or I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Whew. Three more idioms to go. You're home early. Are you okay? Well, you know, I woke up feeling under the weather. Feeling under the weather. This means you feel a little bit sick. Maybe you have a cold. I woke up feeling under the weather. You look a bit under the weather. Are you okay? Anyway, I went to work. I was feeling rough all morning. Long story short, my boss sent me home. Long story short, we use this idiom when there's kind of a big story, but it's not important. The ending is important. We make a long story, short. I canceled the flight, but I didn't get my money back. I called the airline and the airline told me to call the bank. I called my bank and the bank said, call the airline. I, long story short, someone helped me and I got my money back. I know it's only three o'clock, but I'm going to hit the sack. Hit the sack. Go to bed. We have an early flight tomorrow. We better hit the sack. Very nice. Okay, challenge. In the comments below, can you write me a mini conversation using one or two of these idioms? And let me know if there are any of these idioms in your language. 
Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to make another video for you. Thank you. Bye. Subscribe to my channel using one or Good. So you can see there are many idioms there, right? Say your time. That is very easy. It's something that we can use in a normal conversation. You can say that again also. I'll take your word for it. Also, that is something that we can use in a common conversation. Hey, you work cut up for you. Or, I mean, all these are good for you to use in a, in a conversation. So, um, a ver, ¿qué entendimos? ¿Alguna, ¿Algún comentario? ¿Alguna cosa que les haya llamado atención del video? Ok. Igual son idiomas, ¿verdad? Los idiomas hay que... Mm, un comentario como... raro. Dígame. Hablaba rápido. Sí, la verdad es que este no es para... She talked eh, very fast. Para, para básico, pero se le entendía. Yo siento que más o menos se le entendía. Y lo bueno es que tenía... Yeah, tenía, I understood. Ajá. O sea, la, la explicación de cada, de cada uno era, era buena, ¿verdad? Era buena, porque sí se entendía de qué, de qué se trataba cada uno. Igual ¿no? con los dibujitos. Ajá, con los dibujitos uno entiende bien, ¿no? Exactly. Ok. Very good. Uh, now... We're going to continue with the book. Good. Unit three, I will be able to ask and answer questions to check that maintenance procedures are met. Okay. So that's what we're going to do in unit number three. That is troubleshooting. ¿Se acuerdan que era troubleshooting? No, no me acuerdo. Solución de problemas. Perfecto, como solución de problemas, ¿verdad? Es como, como cuando llamamos a soporte técnico, ¿verdad? That will be it. So, number one says, who is the person who fixes damaged equipment? Who's that person? At my work, honestly, uh, the person that is, um, ¿cómo se decía cargo? In charge. Okay, in charge of resolve that problems and never goes. So uh, the sales assistant help us. At least you have somebody to help, right? So the sales assistant, not the technician. Okay, so yes, it's like a technician almost always, right? IT department, things like that. What are some pieces of equipment you have trouble with? Ah, that is a nice question. What are some pieces of equipment you have trouble with? A veces, no sé cómo se dice, pero como que la, la computadora tiene una batería y si uno no enciende eso, no enciende lo demás. Ah, okay. Y eso a veces hace falta. Yeah, it's the UPS. The UPS. Eso, yeah. That that happens. I mean, that is something that is very useful, but I mean, if you don't turn on the UPS, the rest of the computer does not turn on. Y otra es que cuando facturamos, si, si escribimos demasiado rápido, se traba y, y el sistema nos saca. <laughs> oh, I really get stuck. So this is, the system yeah. is very slow sometimes. Very good, perfect. Now we're going to do the conversation, okay? Eh, como lo hacemos usualmente, yo digo, chequean la pronunciación, practicamos y luego vemos el vocabulario. So, Tom, I need your help. Can you pass me the spanner, please? I need to tighten up this screw. Sure, here you go. Thanks a lot. Look, did Kit clean up the room before he left? Yes, he did. I know he did because 
I asked him to switch off the power. Great. By the way, did you call up the electrician? The engine doesn't stop to turn off. And now we have a problem. Yeah, I think that if you don't oil it regularly, it will seize up eventually. That's correct. Pronunciation question. Yeah, I have one. Uh -huh. Seize up. Seize up, uh huh. Seize up. Yep, that's the one. Um, and I need to tighten. Tighten. Tighten up. Tighten up. Tighten up. Tighten up. Tighten up. Yo creo que eso es todo. Okay. Any other pronunciation question? The word is spanner, spinner. Spanner. Spanner. Teacher, mm -hmm. electrician, electrician. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other pronunciation question? Teacher, I will say the put the electrician the in engine. 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 Mm -hmm. De ahí viene la palabra engineer. Any other? Did he say regularly? Uh, regularly. Regularly. Any other? Okay, so let's practice. Let's see how it goes. Uh, Jeanette and Christina, we're going to start. Okay, si quiere empiece usted, Ana, o como usted desee. Vaya. So, I need your help. Can you pass me that spanner, please? I need to turn up this gray. It's great. It's great. Sure. Sure, here you go. Thanks, I lot. Yes, Look deep, keep clean up the room before he left. Yes, I did. I know he died. Okay. Or I, I make, he, he did, teacher, or he died? He did, because he died, se murió. He, no queremos que se muera. <laughs> he did, he did. Oh. Bueno, lo empezaré. Yes, I did. Uh, now, he did because I asked um, ask a bitch. Asked. Asked him to switch off the power. Great. By the way, by the way, did you call up the electrician? The engine doesn't stop to turn up. And now we have a problem. Yeah. I think that if you don't oil it regularly, it will say, it will say, six. Six. Six up or six up. Six, six up. Six up. Eventually. 
Thanks for it. Very good, perfect. Thank you. Thank now, you. nice. Saul Adalberto and Carla Mendoza. Okay. Tom, I need you. I need your help. Can you pass me that spanner, please? I need the thickening of Titan. this screw. Tightening. Tightening up this screw. Sure, here you go. Thanks. A lot. Thanks a lot. Look, did Kit clean up the room before he left? Yes, he did. I know he did because I asked him to switch off the power. Great. By the way, by the, by way, the way, by the way, did you call up the electrician? Call up the electrician. The engine does doesn't stop. So, so good enough. And now we have a problem. Yeah, I think that if you don't oil it regularly, it will size up eventually. That's correct. Very good, thank you. Now, Mario Ernesto and Carla Ivania. Okay. Tom, I need your help. Can you pass me that spanner, please? I need I need to tighten up. Tighten up this screen. Sure. Here you go. Thanks a lot. Look, did kid clean clean up the room before he left? Yes, he did. I know he did because I asked him to switch off the power. Um, great. By the way, did you call up the electrician? The engine doesn't stop lock, doesn't stop to turn off. And now we have a problem. Yeah, I think that if you don't or if it regularly it will size size of eventual size up size up eventual that's correct okay very good perfect Roberto Cruz is possible for you not possible okay Carla Nila and Elizabeth Hernandez Okay. Tom, I need your help. Can you pass me that spanner, please? I need to tighten up this screw. Hello, Elizabeth. Mm, okay. No está. No está. Saúl Alberto le va a ayudar. Okay. Uh, I start. Uh, no, la segunda parte, sure. Ah, so, sure. Here you go, here you go. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Look, did, did Kit clean up the room before he left? Yes, he did. I know he did because I asked him to, him to switch, switch off the power. Great. By the way, did you call up the electrician? The engine doesn't stop to turn off, and now we have a problem. Yeah, I think that if you don't oil it regularly, 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 it will size up eventually. That's correct. Okay, very good. Perfect. Thank you. Now, Marilyn and... Francisco Acuña. Okay. Hello, Francisco. ¿Se puede? ¿No se puede? Creo que no puede. Kevin Ramiro, ¿puede usted? Tampico. Carlos me dijo que no podía. Abel Edenilson, ¿puede usted? Okay. 
Good, perfect. Entonces, Marilyn and Abel. Okay, John, mm -hmm. I need your help. Can you pass me that spanner, please? I need to tighten up this screen. Sure, here it go. Here you go. Thanks a lot. Look, did Kit clean up the room before he left? Yes, he did. I know he did because I asked him to switch up the power. Great. By the way, did you call up the electrician? The engine doesn't stop to turn off and now we have a problem. Yeah, I think that if you don't hit regularly, it will size up eventuality. Size up. Size up eventuality. That's correct. Very good, perfect, thank you. Now, let's be careful on some pronunciation things like, for example, tighten up, okay, screw. Okay, let's see, switch off. Electrician. Says up. Okay. Ahora veamos vocabulario. Hay varias palabras interesantes aquí. Pass me that spanner. ¿Qué es spanner para empezar? I don't know. Okay. Spanner es una llave. Una llave esa es como de, de mecánico o algo por el estilo. Una llave inglesa, podemos decir. Ese es spanner. Y dice, can you pass me? ¿Qué es can you pass me? Pasarme. Puedes pasarme. Very good. Y luego dice, I need to tighten up. ¿Saben qué es tighten up? No sé. Ok, tighten up mm. es apretar. ¿Y okay. screw? ¿Screw? Ah, esa es la siguiente pregunta. ¿Qué es screw? <risa> Tornillo. Tornillo, muy bien. Entonces es algo así como páseme la llave, por favor. Necesito apretar este tornillo. O sea que se le zafó un tornillo. Ok. Luego tenemos Tom. Here you go. ¿Qué es here you go? Como aquí tienes. Aquí tienes. Ahí está. Se lo está dando ahí en sus manos. Luego dice, thanks a lot. Look, this kid clean up. ¿Qué es clean up? Limpiar. Limpiar, ¿verdad? Así como clean. So, it's kind of the same. The room before he left. Yes, he did. I know he did because I asked him to switch off. ¿Qué era switch off? Apagar. Apagar. Very good. The power. Right. By the way. ¿Qué es by the way? No By the way, sería por cierto. Ey, por cierto, cualquier, en cualquier situación que quieran decir por cierto, ese es by the way. Ok. So, did you call up the electrician? ¿Qué es call up? Sí, le llamó. Exactly, sí, le llamó. Al electrician, ¿qué es electrician? Electricista. Electricista, very good. Y luego dice the engine. ¿Qué es engine? Motor. El motor, ¿verdad? Y de aquí viene, como les comentaba, la palabra engineer. Eh, hay muchas palabras que hacen lo mismo. Por ejemplo, work, worker. Engine, engineer. Entonces le agregamos la ER y cambia de nombre hacia el, la profesión. No todas son así, pero hay muchas que son así. So, the engine, el motor doesn't stop to turn off. ¿Qué es turn off? Apagar. Apagar. Muy bien. Entonces el motor no, par, no para de apagarse. ¿verdad? Ahora, aquí tenemos una situación. Tenemos switch off, que es apagar, y turn off, que es apagar. ¿Cuál es la diferencia entre uno y el otro? Uno es eléctrico y el otro es mecánico. Eh, parecido puede ser 
switch off, como su nombre lo dice, hay un switch ahí que usted aprieta, ¿verdad? Lo aprieta y, o lo enciende, lo apaga, algo por el estilo. Entonces, switch off se refiere a, a apretar el botón, ¿verdad? Se refiere a eso. En cambio, turn off se refiere a algo que está funcionando y se apaga, que puede ser cualquier tipo de aparato, o sea, en general. Luego dice, I think that if you don't oil it, ¿qué es oil it? Aceitarlo. Aceitarlo, very good, regularly. It will seize up, ¿qué es seize up? No es lo mismo size, porque size es la talla, ¿verdad? Talla de las camisas. Este es seize up. Como llevarlo a nivel. No. Mm, no. Seize up es como que se queda trabado, se, se termina de arruinar, ya no va a funcionar eventualmente. So that It's will like stuck. It's like getting stuck, yeah. Very good. Good. Do you have any questions here before we move on? No questions. Very good. Now we're going to do the exercise. Okay, according to the conversation, number one, what seems to be the problem? So what is the problem? The engine turned off. The engine, uh, yeah, it's turning off. So it's not good, right? Number two, what kind of jobs do you think Dave and Tom have? Mm, that's the question. Mm, mechanic. Mechanic, maybe it's a mechanic. Uh huh. Uh, it may be that they operate the machine or anything like that. Okay, number three, it says who is in charge of checking the machinery and equipment at your workplace? Uh, I did it a few minutes ago, so um, someone else can participate, I think. Of course. But nobody wants. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. <laughs> They're too shy. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it can be a lot of people, right? That it will be there. Um, este ya lo vimos. So, okay. How to use two uh, word phrasal verbs. Vamos entonces a repasar lo de los phrasal verbs. Ok, vamos a escuchar a Abel. ¿Se nos puede leer el cuadrito que está ahí, por favor? El some birds. Eh, uh, el, sí, ajá, ese cuadro. Some birds are two part birds. They consist on a bird and a participle or small word Fanto. like a a, a particle. Particle. Or like a preposition. The particle. The particle. Often, particle. Es el particle. Uh -huh. Often gives a new meaning to the birds. Continue. Oh. Yes, please. For example, they plus after that he takes takes after his father. He looks like his father or he como se pronuncia eso? Behaves. 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 Behave like his father. Call plus of Marie Collier of, of the meeting. Marie can sell the meeting. Very good. So some verbs are two part verbs. That is the phrasal verb, right? They consist on a verb and a particle or small word like a preposition. Entonces, particle es como una partícula. O sea, que es el verbo y una o otra palabra, que es una partícula o una palabra pequeña como una preposición. The particle often gives a, me a new meaning to the verb, que es lo que habíamos visto. ¿verdad? Que esa partícula, esa preposición... A veces le da un nuevo significado al verbo. Ya es un nuevo verbo. Y hay dos ejemplos, como take after. Eh, he takes after his father. Entonces, cuando decimos he takes after, 
His father es, él se parece a su papá. ¿Qué es lo que dice en el paréntesis? He looks like his father. O sea, que se mira como su padre. O he behaves like his father. ¿Qué es behaves? ¿Alguien sabe? Se comporta. Se comporta muy bien. Se comporta como su papá. Very good. En el siguiente dice call off. Ese es otro phrasal verb. Mary called off the meeting. Entonces viene siendo como cancelar, ¿verdad? Mary canceló la reunión. No more meetings. Hay muchos phrasal verbs como los que ya vimos. Uh, y pues aquí hay un par más, ¿verdad? Y hay unos que estaban aquí arriba, como tighten up, ¿se acuerdan? Entonces, eh, dice match each verb with its preposition and complete each sentence with one of them. Hagamos juntos este y después le doy chance para que ustedes hagan el de abajo. Ya está hecho el número uno. Tighten up. Entonces, switch. ¿Sería switch? Off. Ah. Off. Switch off. Very good. Y entonces el último sería clean. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Good. Ahora tenemos el siguiente. Seas sería up o up. 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 Very good. Turn. Off. 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 Very good. And call. Up. Up. Perfect. Ahora con esos phrasal verbs lo que vamos a hacer es que vamos a completar las seis oraciones que están ahí. La primera ya está llena con tighten up. Entonces le doy unos minutos para que puedan completar las seis oraciones.
Ok, did you finish? Terminamos todo ya o falta alguien? Ok, let's check together. So, number two it says this workshop is very dirty. Let's clean up. Clean up. Very good. Let's clean up this place. Number three, remember to switch off. Switch off. Very good, perfect. Remember to switch off the power before you remove this the, the machine. Number four, I hope the computer won't. Seize up. Seize up. Turn off. Turn off. Ah, okay. So I hope the computer won't turn off again. Yeah, it's not good. If you don't lubricate these types of machines regularly, they will. Ah, seize up. It's the CSC is up. Very good. Uh, the printer w just stopped working. We need to. Call up. Very good. Call up a technician. Very nice. Do you have any question? Aquí, alguna pregunta, duda? ¿Cuál era la última, teacher? Que no escuché porque esa última sí no la tengo. Ah, okay. Sería call up. Call up. Okay. Okay. Yes. Any other question? Okay, so let's go to uh, the reading, la lectura. Como lo hacemos usualmente, yo leo, ustedes chequean pronunciación y luego ustedes leen, ¿verdad? Déjenme ver, sí, todo lo vamos a leer. Entonces dice, step one, get the right people on board before you begin to organize your preventive maintenance plan, you need to have the right people on board with the plan. Include top management, maintenance managers, maintenance technicians, and any other staff who understands the way your system operates. This could include people from data processing, accounting, craftsmen, and members of production and production control. You may not need input from each of these people at every step of the process, but it's important to have them on board and kept up to date so you can get important feedback as you go. Step two, set goals for your preventive maintenance plan. Using your task forces input, set goals you have to achieve using the system. Begin training your task force on the computer skills they'll need when your preventive maintenance plan goes into full effect. Number three, inventory the equipment and assets. Go through your facility and inventory all the equipment you're considering, including in your preventive maintenance plan. Tagging the equipment as you go. Create a list of all the assets you have responsibility for. Record the following details as you go. And keep in mind that this process is much easier to carry out and organized with the assistance of a good preventive maintenance software program. Okay, do you have pronunciation questions? Pronunciation questions. Hmm, let me see. Okay. Managing, así sería, teacher. Manager, manager. Manager, okay. Mm. Donde dice processing, accounting, and craftsmen. Craftsmen. craftsmen, yeah, craftsmen. Craftsmen. Good. 
Any other pronunciation question? Um, no, no, I guess no. Okay, very good, perfect, thank you. Uh, ¿Alguien más, alguna otra pregunta o leemos ya? Leemos ya, teacher. Leamos, ¿verdad? Very good, nice. Viene motivada. Cristina de... quiere iniciar. Ah, vaya. Ahorita. No quiero iniciar, me quiero equivocar para que me corrijan. Nice, good, that's good. Vale. <risa> top, eh, teacher, ¿cómo se pronuncia? Mane? ¿Cuál, perdón? De, en, después de top. Después de. De donde dice with the plan include. Ah, top. top management. Vale. ¿Cómo? Management. Gracias. Good. Perfecto, vamos a iniciar entonces con Cristina. A ver, Cristina. Yes, teacher. Step one, get, get. Step one, get the right people on board. Before you begin. 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 Be begin. Begin. Before you begin to organize. Así organize. Or organize. Organ organ no. Organize. 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 Okay. Before you begin to organize your preventive maintenance, 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 yeah, maintenance. Maintenance, maintenance. Maintenance plan, maintenance, maintenance plan or plan. Ahí sería plan. Sí, plan. Plan, Main, maintenance plan. You need to have the right people on board with the plan. Include those ma management. Así dijo usted. Management. 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 Eh, maintenance managers, maintenance technicians, technician, technician, technicians, 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 uh, and any other staff who understand the way. Your system operates. 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 This will include people from data processing, accounting, craftsmen, craftsmen, and members on of production and production and production control. You may not need input from each of these people and act every step of the process back or book but but it's important to have them on board and get and can have today so you can get important feedback as you go step one seed goal for your preventive main, maintenance plan Ay, si, me, si me equivoco, ahí me corrige, por favor, teacher. Of course. Maintenance plan, using your task force input, said goals you hope, hope sería, de hecho. Hope, no, yeah. Hope, hope to achieve, achieve using, using this, this system, Beijing training your task force of the computer, a skill they need when your preventive maintenance, maintenance, maintenance plan goes into full effect. Step three. Inventory the equipment and assets go through your facility and inventory all the equipment you're considering including in your preventive maintenance plan, tagging, tagging the equipment as you go create a list of all the assets you have responsibility for record, for record the following details as you go and keep in, in mind or in mind? In mind. 
in mind. That's this that this process is much easier. Es la palabra teacher. Easier. 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 Easier to carry out and organize. 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 And organize with the assistance of a good preventive maintenance software program. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Okay. Janet is la siguiente. Step one, get the right people on board. Before you begin to be organized, your preventive maintenance plan. Maintenance. You need to have the right people on board with the plan. Include two maintenance, maintenance. 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 No, maintenance. Maintenance, managers, maintenance, technician, and any other staff who understand the way your system operates. This will include people from date processes, accounting, craftsmen, and, mem and members of production and production control. You may, to, you may not need input from it. And of these people are very step of the process. But it's important to have them on board and keep up to date so, so you can get important feed, feedback as you go. A step two set wall, walls for your preventive Maintenance, 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 maintenance. Esta palabra le voy a dar un truco aquí. Es así de mains, mains, y la otra es nance, nance, mains, maintenance, maintenance, así. Yeah. Maintenance, maintenance. Bye. Use it, use it, your text first input set what you hope to achieve, achieve. Use it, the system. Begin training your stuff first in the computers. Skill they knew the deck. Need hand your preventive maintain, maintain. Maintenance. Maintenance. Me <ríe> es rara esa palabra. Tiene razón. <ríe> Plan goes into full in effect. Except three. Eventually the e equipment and asset. Go through your... Mm, go through your facility and inventory all the equipment you're considering, including in your preventive. Maintenance. 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 ¿Cómo se pronuncia esa? Tagging. 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 Oh. Tagging. 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 Tagging the equipment as you go. Create a list of all the sets you have responsibility for. Record the following details as you go. And keep in mind, in mind, in mind, that, uh -huh. this, mind that this process is much easier to carry out and organize. Organized. With Organize, organize with the assistance of good preventive maintenance prosper program. Okay, very good, perfect, thank you. Eh, Carla Daniela. Yes, teacher. 
Voy, teacher. Mami, ayúdame con el verbo. Voy. Step one. Get the right people on board. Before you begin to organize your preventive maintenance plan, you need to have the right people on board with the plan. Include top management, maintenance managers, maintenance technicians, and any other staff who understands the way your system operates. This could include people from data processing, accounting, crafts, craftsmen, and members of production and production control. You may not need input from each of these people at every step of the process, but it's important to have them on board and keep kept up the day so you can get important <laughs> feedback as you go. Step two, set goals for your preventive maintenance plan. Using your task force input, set goals you hope to achieve using the system. Begin training your task force on the computer skills they'll need when your preventive maintenance plan goes into full effect. Step three, inventory the equipment and assess it. Go through your facility and inventory all the equipment you're considering, including in your preventive maintenance plan. Tagging the equipment as you go. Create a list of all the assets you have responsibility for. Record the following details as you go and keep in mind that this process is much easier to carry out and organize with the assistance of a good preventive maintenance software program. Very good, perfect, thank you. Now, Mario Ernesto. Okay, step one. Get the right people on board. Before to begin to organize your preventive maintenance plan, you need to have the right people on board with the plan. Include top management, maintenance manager, maintenance team. Management. Pardon? Management. Management. The mission and any other staff who understand, understand the way your system operates. This goal includes people from data processing, accounting, craftsmen, and members of a production and, a, and production control. You may not need, not need input from each of these people and uh, every step of the process. But it's important to have them on board and keep and keep up the date so you can get important feedback as you go. Step up, step two, set course for your preventive maintenance plan. Using for tax forces input, set goals you hope to achieve using system. Taking training to text to task force on the computer skill they need when your preventive maintenance plan goes into full effect. Uh, step three, inventory the equipment and assets. Go through to facility and inventory are the equipment you're considering including in your preventive maintenance plan. Tag in the equipment as you go. Create a list of all the assets you have responsibility, responsibility for. Record the following details as you go. And keep in mind that process that this process is much easier to carry out and organize the assistance of a good preventive maintenance software program. 
Very good, thank you. Now, Carla Mendoza. Okay, and get the right people on board. Before you, you begin to organize your preventive maintenance plan, you need to have the right people on board with the plant, including to management, management, maintenance, managers, maintenance technician, and any other staff who understand the way your system operates. This call include people from data processing, accounting, craftsmen, and members of production and production control. You may not need input from each of these people at every a step of the process, but it's important to have them on board and keep up today so you can get important feedback as you go. Set goals for your preventive maintenance plan. Using your task for input set goals, you have to achieve using the system. Begin, begin training your task for on the computer skill that they, they'll need when your preventive maintenance plan goes into full effect. Inventory the equipment and assets. Go strong your facility and inventory all the equipment you're considering including in your preventive maintenance plan Taking the equipment as you go, create a list of all the assets you have responsibility for. Record the following details as you go and keep in mind that this process is much easier to carry out and organize, organize. With, the, organize with the assistance of a good preventive maintenance software program. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. Now, uh, Ivania. Okay. Step one, get the right, the right people on board. Before you begin to organize your preventive maintenance plan, plan, you need to have the right people on board with the plan. Include the management, management, mind, Maintenance managers, maintenance technicians, and any other staff who understand the way your system operates. This could include, include people from data processing, accounting, craftsmen, and members of production and production control. You may not need input from each of these people at every step of the process, but it's important to have them on board and keep up to date so you, so you can get important feedback as you go. Step two, set, set call for your preventing ma maintenance plan. Using your task force input set calls, you hope to achieve, achieve. Using yeah, achieve. the achieve. 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 Then you hope to achieve using the system behind training Begin. your task. Begin. Training your task force on the computer skill they are need when your preventing maintenance plan goes into full effect. Step three: inventory the equipment and assets. Go through your facility and inventory of the equipment you're considering, including including. In your preventing maintenance plan, tagging the equipment as you go, create a list of 
all the assets you have responsibly for. Record the following details as you go and quit in mind that this process is much easier to carry, easier to carry out and organize with the assistance of a good preventing maintenance software program. Very good, perfect, thank you. Uh, Roberto Cruz, is possible for you? Not possible. Elizabeth Hernandez. Okay, teacher. Step one, get the right people on board. Before you begin to organize your preventive maintenance plan, you need to have the right people on board with the plan. Include the management, maintenance manager, maintenance technician, and any other staff to understand the way your system operates. This could include people from data processing, accounting, management, and members of production and production control. You may not need input from each of these people at every step of the process, but it's important to have them on board and quit up two days ago to get important feedback has to go. Step two, set goals to, to, for your preventive maintenance plan. Using your task force input set goal to help to achieve using the system, begin throwing your task force on the com computer skill that you need when your preventive maintenance plan goes into full effect. Step three, inventory the equipment and asset. Go through your facility and inventory of the equipment you're considering including in your preventive maintenance plan. Tagging the equipment and you go. Create a list of the assets you have responsibility for. Record the following details is you go and quit in mind that this process is much easier to carry out the organize with the assistance of a good preventive maintenance software program. Very good, perfect, thank you. Uh, Gabriel Esau, is it possible for you? Not possible, Saul Adalberto. Step one, set the right people on board. Before you begin to organize your preventive maintenance plan, you need to have the right people on board with the plan, including top management and maintenance manager, maintenance technician, and any other staff who understands the way your system operates. This call includes people for data, data processing, accounting, craft, craftsmen, craftsmen, and members of production and production control. You may not need input from each of these people at every, every step of the process, but it's important to have them on board and keep you keep up to date so you can have important feedback as you go. Step two, set goals for you for you preventive maintenance plan using your task force input set the goals you hope to achieve using the system, begin training you task force on the computer skills. Tell 
need win when your preventive maintenance plan goes into full effect. Step three, inventory the equipment and assets. You throw your facility, facility and inventory all the equipment you are considering including in your preventive maintenance plan, taking the equipment as you go. Create a list of all the assets you have responsibility for. Record or record the following details as you go and keep in mind that this process is much easier to carry carry out and organize it, organize it with the assistance of a good preventive maintenance software program. Very good, perfect, thank you. Now, uh, Marilyn Alejandra. Okay. Um, okay. Getting right people on board. Before you be begin to organize your property maintenance plan, you need to have the right people on board with the plan. Include top a ¿cómo se pronuncia esa? Management. Management maintenance. Manager, maintenance technician, and any other staff who understands the way your system operates. This could include people from data processing, accounting, and graph graphmen, and members of production and production control. You may not need input from each of these people in every step of the process. But it's important to have them on board and keep up to date so you can get important feedback as you go. Set goals for your preventive maintenance plan. Using your test forces input, set goals you hope to achieve using the system. Begin training your task force on the computer skill. They'll need when your parenting maintenance plan goes into full effect. Inventory the equipment and assets. You go through your facility. Facility inventory, all the equipment you're considering. Equipment. equipment you're considering including in your parenting maintenance plan. Tagging the equipment as you go. Create a list of all the assets you have responsibility for. Record the following details as you go. And keep in mind that this process is much easier to carry up and organize with the assistance of a good parenting maintenance software program. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. Now let's see Francisco Acuña. Not possible. Let's see Abel Edenlison. Okay, teacher. Get the right people on board before you begin to organize your preventive maintenance plan. You need to have the right people on board with the plan include to management miners, managers, miners, technician, and any other staff staff who understand the way your system operates. This could include people from date processing, accounting, craftsmen and members of production and production control. 
you may not need input from each of these people at every step of the process, but it's important to have them on board and keep keeps up to date so you can get important feedback and you go set goals your preventive minus plan using your task forks input set goals you have to achieve using the system begin training your task force on the computer skin day i'll need when your preventive minus plan goes into full effect. Step three, inventory the equipment and equipment. asset. Equipment, asset, and asset. Go through your facility and inventory all the equipment. equipment. You're considering equipment, you're considering include in the, in your preventive maintenance plan. Thank, thank you. The equipment, equipment that you go, equipment go great. A list of the asset you have responsible responsibility for record the following: the tiles, eyes you go, and keep in my that this process is much easier to carry carry up and organize with the assistant of a good preventive maintenance software program. Very good, perfect, thank you. Uh, Kevin Ramiro, is it possible for you? Not possible, okay. Let's check some uh, pronunciation things. Uh, organize. Esta creo que hoy sí, ya todos la decimos bien, bien, nice. Maintenance. Management. Technicians. See what else. Achieve. Uh, that is it. Ahora vamos a ver vocabulario. Good. Get the right people on board. ¿Qué quiere decir on board? A bordo. A bordo. Hay que, hay que tener la gente adecuada a bordo. Before you begin. ¿Qué es begin? Begin. Para. ¿Cómo comenzar? Para comenzar. Comenzar, very good, nice. Sí, comenzar. Good. Uh, maintenance, what is maintenance? Mantenimiento, teacher. Good. Maintenance. Bueno, dice maintenance managers. ¿Qué sería maintenance managers? Mantenimiento preventivo. Mm, no, sería. Ah, pero antes de mantenimiento. Sería de gerente, mm. gerente de mantenimiento. That will be. Gerente de mantenimiento. Yeah. Y aquí tenemos technicians, maintenance technicians. ¿Qué sería entonces maintenance technicians? Técnico de mantenimiento. Técnico de mantenimiento. Very good. Let's see. What is accounting? Contar. Contabilidad. Contabilidad, very good. Let's see. What is input? Es entrada. 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 Entonces aquí es como, no, puede que no necesites la, como la información de cada una de estas personas ¿ves? en cada paso del proceso. So, Input, en ingreso de algo. Eh, let's see, este es pasado. Recordemos que la pronunciación es kept. 
Eh, entonces sería que up to date. ¿Qué es up to date? Actualizar. Actualizar. Very good. Tener actualizado. O mantenerse actualizado. Exacto, mantenerse actualizado. Good. Feedback. ¿Qué era feedback? Retroalimentación. Retroalimentación. Good. Um, achieve. What is achieve? Achieve. Metas. Eh, algo por el estilo, sí, lograr, ¿verdad? Lograr. Uh, let's see. Be begin training your task force. ¿Qué es task force? Grupo de trabajo, teacher. Something like that, sí. Es como un grupo mm -hmm. de, de lo que tienen que hacer cada uno. En este caso, lo que tienen que hacer las computadoras, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. Uh, ¿Qué era skills? Habilidades. Good, habilidades. Uh, go through. What is go through? Revisar. Eh, Revisar, muy bien. En este caso es como revisar. Good. Facility, ¿se acuerdan qué era facility? La instalación. Very good, las instalaciones. Teacher, pero ese go through también tiene otro significado, atravesar, vea. Solo through es atravesar. Solo through. Eh, mm -hmm. Lo que pasa es que viene siendo algo así, lo mismo. A mm -hmm. Ir a través de, o sea, revisar, ¿verdad? Ok. Ok. Tagging. Como cuando tagueamos ahí en una red social, ¿verdad? ¿Qué es tag? Marcar. Etiquetar. 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 Muy bien. Taguear. Nice. Assets. What is assets? Activos. Activos, very good. Keep in mind. What is keep in mind? Teniendo en mente. Very good. Tener en mente. Uh, let's see. Okay, that is it. Very good. Do you have any question? ¿Alguna otra pregunta en esta lectura? No teacher. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to do the exercise. According to what it says here is with the following tips on how to organize preventive maintenance plan. Bueno, no hay, ¿verdad? No hay como indicaciones. Está un poco raro. Dice, having the appropriate people on board is not real. Ah, creo que es true or false. Okay, so number false. one. Having the appropriate people on board is not relevant and yes, it's false. Very good. Cool. Number two, it is important to include people who understand of maintenance. True. True, very good. Setting goals is an option for the PMP. Preventive maintenance plan. Hmm. Maybe true. True, actually, it's true. Very good. Number four, for better results, creating a list of the assets is important. Yes, yeah, true. It's true. Very good. Number five, according to the article, to carry out the preventive maintenance plan, a software is mandatory. Hmm. Ajá. Uy, no sé. ¿Qué, ¿Qué piensas? Perdón, perdón, perdón. Yes, yes, true. True. 
Es... Ok, very good. According to the article, it's true. Ok, good. ¿Tenía alguien una pregunta por ahí? Eh, la primera, ¿cómo era, teacher, la respuesta en la primera? False. ¿Cómo? False. False, no lo entiendo. Falso. Ajá. Uh -huh. Pero falso en inglés, ¿ve? Of course. Uh -huh. Ok. Ok, let's go to unit 3, idioms part 2. Eh, vamos a ver, Ivania nos va a ayudar a leer el cuadrito que está por allí. Ok. Um, wipe it up very tired. Uh, to have a lot of, oh, a lot of ones play. Um, to have a lot, a lot to do. To sleep down. To Settle cry. down. ¿Cómo dicho? Ese se dice settle down. Settle down. To calm down. And hang in there. Be patient. To get one's head about water. To survive. To escape back one's hours. To reduce the number of hours one works stress 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 out stress out under servers strain very anxious 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 and uh, sleep sleep uh -huh. once one's mind be for forget forgotten for forgotten Perfecto, allí lo explicó claramente Ivania, ¿verdad? Entonces son simplemente otros idioms, otros que no hemos visto. Wiped out, ese es el primero. Wiped out sería very tired. O sea, así como ahorita, ¿verdad? Que es viernes y ya toda la semana tenemos encima. We are wiped out. Estamos mucho cansados. Pero ya casi se acaba la clase. You have a lot of one's plate. Ese es un idioma que significa que tiene mucho que hacer. I have a lot of my plate, podemos decir entonces. Eso es tener mucho que hacer. To settle down es muy común. To calm down. To settle down es calmarse. Hey, settle down. Calmar. Hang in there. Be patient. Hang in there es otro idioma que significa estar o tener paciencia. En el otro lado dice to keep one's head above a water. To survive. De hecho es lo que significa literalmente, ¿verdad? Tener la cabeza fuera del agua. O sea, sobrevivir, ¿verdad? To scale back one's hours. Esa es reducir el número de horas a trabajar. So, to scale back one's hours. La última, esa, la, la otra es algo que nosotros ya manejamos. Stress. Estoy estrés. Estoy estresado. Dicen. Eso es un idioma. Lo usamos con stressed out. I'm stressed out. Estoy muy estresado, ¿verdad? Eso. Sleep one's mind, eso significa ser olvidado. That will be it. Entonces, aquí hay más idioms, hay muchos idioms y hay muchos phrasal verbs. Solo hemos visto unos poquitos. Entonces, cuando tengan chance, es buena idea ir viendo si uh, uh, practicamos de a poco, ¿verdad? No hay que aprenderse los todos de un solo, pero poco a poco. Creería yo que se puede lograr. Do you have any question here in these idioms? No questions. Se supone que vamos a escribir un párrafo, pero no, no vamos a hacer eso. Y el lunes vamos a iniciar la unidad 4, que es la última del de libro. Very good. Ok. Ah, tenemos una pregunta aquí de Mario. The secretary make enough copies of the report. ¿De, qué, de cuál era ese, Mario? ¿De cuál ejercicio se acuerda? Eh, ya la resorté. Ah, perfecto. Excelente. Good. Ok, thank you. Ok, uh, entonces como tenemos unos minutos y es viernes, es viernes de práctica, no vamos a echar la platicada. La tarde. Un voluntario o oh, voluntaria. Y 
quien sea, ¿verdad? Que quiera platicar y practicar en inglés. This is the moment. Se están peleando, teacher. Se están peleando por participar. Sí, ahorita voy a escoger yo entonces. Yeah, choose a victim. <laughs> a victim, ok. A ver, creo que con la mayoría ya hablé. Vamos a ver. A ver, de Nilsson. Hi, teacher. Hello, how are you? I'm so so. Why are you so so? I am something uh, sick. Ah, uh, you are feeling under the weather. Yes, teacher. Ah, verdad, ya usamos los phrasal verbs, se dan cuenta. I feel under the weather. I'm under the weather. Me siento okay. algo enfermo. That. So, uh, what do you feel? I mean, is the flu, headache, stomachache? What is the problem with you? Three problems. I have the stomach. I don't know who do you say the bad the pre de la presión. Ah, so you have pressure, blood pressure problems. Yes. Yeah, you need to be careful on that one. I am in control. In the seguro. In the seguro. And did you take your pill today? Yes. Okay. If you took your pill and you go to bed, everything will be fine. Yes, I go to bed. And do you work tomorrow? No, teacher. Good. That's good. You're going to rest. And then... Me dieron, ¿cómo se dice? Me dieron dos días. Uh, so you have a sick leave? Yes. Two days sick leave. De incapacidad. Okay, that's good. You need to rest and that's going to be very good for you. Yeah. Okay, and... So tomorrow you are not going to do anything. You are just going to rest. Yes. Okay. Very good. Perfect. Thank you, Abel. Okay, teacher. Okay. Let's see. Uh, uh, Elizabeth Hernandez. Because, teacher, because... <laughs> I said, yeah, why, why? <laughs> why, entonces? <laughs> okay, vamos a, uh, a platicar, vamos a ver cómo va. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, teacher. And you? How are you today? Very, very tired and very stressed. I'm very stressed out. That is Friday. Why? Uh, because the day was very hard at the office. Very, oh, uh, a lot understand. of things. A lot of meetings, a lot of things to do, and I just want to forget. <laughs> okay, and uh, uh, have you ever eaten Thai food? Um, no. Mm, okay. Never. Uh, I would like to, to try the Thai food, and I was wondering if you know, but what is... What is the most delicious restaurant that you have ever gone? Most delicious. In uh -huh. Sonate. How do you say it? Se me ha olvidado ahorita el nombre. Ah, no me quiere decir. That's good. No, o sea, solo se me ha olvidado. No sé por qué. <risa> Tengo como una laguna mental que no, no logro recortar el nombre. Ah, ok. Sorry. <risa> y como está pensando en inglés y hablando en español, tiene que pensar en inglés. Ah, eso. No logro coordinar. <risa> ok, good. And uh, what do you do... Uh, on vacations. What do you do regularly on vacations? On vacation depends. Mm -hmm. um, if uh, 
plural days in occasion mm, going to visit the family okay in other occasion mm, activities de la casa como se dice household chores mm -hmm. in in days Okay, very good. And uh, what's your favorite movie? Um, it's easy, teacher. <laughs> uh, let's see. Toy Story. Toy Story. My favorite really? Toy Story 4. Four, the fourth. Mm -hmm. The one and where three, he... Uh -huh. Two. Three and four. Mm, yeah. Yeah, let me remember the three is where the the pink teddy bear appears, right? Mm -hmm. Sí. And the fourth is where he gets a girlfriend, right? Sí. <laughs> okay. Yeah, those are very good, very nice movies. I like animated movies are very good, very fantastic. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Elizabeth. Okay, teacher. Okay, let's see Carla Daniela. Hi, teacher. Hello. How are you? I'm very tired. And you? Me too. <laughs> yeah. I'm tired too. <laughs> and are you working tomorrow? Yeah. On the oh. day. Until 5 p.m. Until 5 p.m. I can't believe that. I'm sorry yeah. to hear that one. But that's the way it is, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, have you ever uh, tried Thai food? Not really, teacher. Okay, I'm looking for a place. I was wondering if you knew. And uh, uh, what is the most delicious restaurant have you ever gone? Honestly, Los Angeles. Los Sanchez. I really love the Mexican Mexican food. Okay, so it's like uh, tacos and things like that. Yeah, taco, burrito, tortas, mucho do, queso. Ah, oh, that's good, <laughs> a lot of cheese. Do, uh, do they serve, um, do they serve this thing, uh, uh, birria tacos? Yeah, yeah, it's delicious. Very good. You know, uh, in the past, I like now, birria is my favorite kind of tacos. Ah, uh, some bueno. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why I look like that. Uh, but I mean, Don't that's mean? <laughs> <laughs> That is very good. No worries around. Yeah. Okay. And uh, do you usually cook? Yeah. Every what? day. Every single Recently, day. Recently, uh, a few minutes ago, I was uh, cooking fried um, eggs. Ah, okay, fried eggs. Those are very, very good. Yeah, to carry uh, as my, as my um, breakfast for oh, tomorrow. Okay. Nice, interesting. So it's going to Yeah, that's why my breakfast. camera is off. What time do you usually get breakfast? At 7 a.m. At 7 a.m. At work or at home? At work. Oh, okay. I arrive at work maybe at 5.30 a.m. That is very early. Yeah, my boyfriend picks me up. <laughs> si no, cuesta mucho en bus después. Yeah, that is true. What time do you usually get up? At 4 a.m. At 4 a.m. That's a lot earlier. <laughs> sí. Por eso parezco mapache. <laughs> a raccoon. A raccoon, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sí. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. Hard. yeah. That is that is so true. It, it's hard, right? Sometimes it's hard. Yeah. And um uh you say that you cook. What is the most delicious dish that you cook? <laughs> okay. As my boyfriend said, 
Soporto. Maruchando. Maruchando. No, mentira. <ríe> sí, la sopa de tortilla. Okay, that is good. I mean, that is very nice. Yeah. And how do you say chicharrones, teacher? Chicharrones are chicharrones around the world. Que me encanta que sea así. <ríe> no Yeah. me complico. Yeah, <ríe> that is yeah, easy I love enough it. for, for Spanish words. I mean, some words, tortilla is tortilla. I mean, it's, it's just the same. Okay. Okay, very good. Thank And you. do you like chicharrones? I like chicharrones a lot. I like food a lot. I like meat. Meat is maybe my favorite. And I And also, do you like sushi? I like sushi as well. Yeah. I don't know if was the place from my I, I buy it, yeah, the sushi, but I didn't like. And where did you try that? I don't know why. I don't remember. Uh, I went with my grandmother, and I remember. I don't remember the name, but I don't like it. I don't know. You didn't It's like it. a weird taste. <laughs> okay, very good. Yeah, maybe Yeah, you. I prefer fish fried. Fried Ah, fish. fried fish is very good. I, that is one of my favorites Yeah, as well. me quedo con eso. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. They, that is fantastic. Frito mejor, gracias. <laughs> okay, <laughs> very good, perfect. Thank you. okay, you're welcome. Let's see. Uh -huh. Mario Ernesto. Hi. Hello, how are you? Oh, well, very bad. Why? Are you sick or something? No, my mother is, is, is in the hospital in the you see. Really, I didn't know that. I'm sorry to hear that one. I hope she recovers very soon. So you are going to the hospital after the class or tomorrow. Okay, so are you going to the hospital today or tomorrow? Tomorrow. Okay, very good. Yeah, I hope she recovers and everything goes well. Okay, and uh, what time do you usually get up? Uh, seven o'clock. At seven. Okay, Seven that's good. a.m. o'clock. That's that's very nice. So, what time do you usually go to bed? At midnight. Yeah, so you are a night person. And. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, what is the most delicious restaurant have you ever gone? Perdón, el monstruo de ese rastro. Oh. Nothing at all. No. Okay. So you prefer to cook, to eat at home. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, uh, I'm fish. The. Como digo, me gusta pescar a mí y preparármelo. Oh, that's good. So you like go fishing. So have you ever caught a really big fish? Yes. What size was the biggest one? One meter. Really? One meter? That is... One park. Imagine. That is interesting. Of course you ate the, the fish. So, of course, you cooked that fish. Uh, yes. Very good. I I believe that was very good. And and trust of course. Yes. Yeah, of course. It's, it's, it's too big to, to cook it like that one, right? Okay, very good. Thank you, Mario. I hope your mother gets well very soon.
Good. Um, Carla Mendoza. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. How are you? I'm tired. Oh, me too. You know, I I will finish the class and I faint. You know what is faint? Yeah, do you know what is faint? Que se sabe que es faint. I no. Ah, desmayarse. So after the <laughs> class, I will faint. <laughs> yes. Okay, and uh, what is the most delicious restaurant have you ever gone? Um, the China Food Restaurant. And what is the name of that? And the China Walk, uh, the Imperio, Celeste Imperio. That is a good one, right? Yes. Yeah, it's true. It's a very good restaurant. Uh, so, and you like uh, seafood? Excuse me? Do you like seafood? What is seafood? Seafood. Mariscos. No. Don't like me. Really? No. What is your favorite food? And uh, chicken with vegetable. Chicken with vegetable. Well, that's good. That's very nice. Very healthy. Yes. Okay. And uh, do you cook yourself? Yes. What is the most delicious dish that you cook? <laughs> the cake. Mm, okay, so desserts are your thing. Excuse me? Desserts are your thing. I don't understand. Okay, desserts. No sabe qué es desserts. No. Los postres. Mm. More or less, but I don't like uh, the bread. Ah, okay. No bread. Just for no the bread. cake. No. Okay. Very good. Perfect. Thank you, Carla. Okay. Who's missing? Let's see. Jeanette. Hello, Jeanette. Hey, How are you? Uh, fine, thank you. Nice. Okay, have you ever tried Thai food? Please, repeat. Yeah, have you ever tried Thai food? Uh -huh. Have you ever tried Thai food? Thai food. No. Tailandesa. Ah, uh, no. Not at all. Okay. <laughs> what is the most delicious restaurant have you ever gone? Mm, yeah, my my restaurant delicious um pizza hut. Ah, okay, very good. That is very popular, right? <laughs> What specialty of pizza is your favorite? Um, the, um, the Suprema. Supreme. Supreme. Ah, with, with vegetables. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you cook pizza? Um, pizza. Yeah, can you cook pizza? Um, que si he cocinado. Uh -huh. um, no. No, not at all. No. <laughs> Just go to the pizza and order. It's easier, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. And uh, are you working tomorrow? Please? Yeah. 
Are you working tomorrow? Uh, no. Nice. So you're going to rest. Mm -hmm. That is very good. It's, it's necessary to rest, right? I see. <laughs> okay, very good. Perfect. Thank you, Jeanette. Bye. Okay. Gracias, teacher. <laughs> Bueno, ¿hay alguna pregunta o duda con la clase de ahora? ¿Qué pues, lección toca ahora entregar? Sería hasta la 15, el, la tarea 15. Good, good. Perfecto. Bueno, vamos entonces a pasar lista y luego nos vamos a acostar. So, let's see. Abel Edenilson Salazar Melara. Present teacher. Good. Abigail Elizabeth Flores Hernández. Present teacher. Good. Carlos Humberto Estrada Escobar. Elia Yanira Canizale Blanco. Francisco Ernesto Acuña Rivera. Gabriel Esaú Melara Rosales. Isela Beatriz Hernández Morales. Joana Saraí Maldonado González. Carla Daniela Molina Cruz. Present. Good. Carla Ivania Anaya Ancheta. Carla Lorena Mendoza Guevara. Present. Good. Kevin Ramiro Vázquez Pineda. Good. Laura Guadalupe Fuentes de Meléndez. Marilyn Alejandra Grande Pérez. Present. Good. Mario Ernesto López Ramírez. Present. Good. Mirna Janet Ángel de Castro. Present, teacher. Good. Roberto Emilio González Cruz. Santos Cristina Cerrito de Ruiz. Present teacher. Good. Saúl Adalberto Cornejo Valdés. Present. Good. Jocelyn Stephanie Roldán Castaneda. Ok, el one on one de ahora es para Mario Ernesto. Y pues los demás... See you on Monday. Have a good weekend. Rest a lot and practice English. See you around. See you. Have a rest. Good night. Good night. Good night, good night, good night. Good night. Good night. Hey, hello, Mario. How are you? So bad. Yeah, sí, le entiendo. La verdad, no le voy a robar mucho tiempo. Eh, los one on one creo que ya tiene experiencia, pues sí. La primera pregunta que tengo es, ¿siente usted que, que va aprendiendo, que va pues evolucionando en su aprendizaje? Mm, a veces sí, a veces. Ok. A veces me olvido todo lo pasado. Ah, ok. Sí, quizá ahí lo que hay que hacer nada más es tratar de practicar un poco más. Yo sé que es difícil por el trabajo y el tiempo y todo eso, pero si usted practica un poquito, aunque sea eh, un día sí, un día no, that will be a good. Okay. Eh, ¿Tiene uh, usted alguna pregunta o duda en algún tema que hayamos visto o cualquier tema de inglés? No, creo que el problema va a ser la plataforma de que tiene sus truquitos por ahí que esa pregunta que tenía todas las veces solo se le da vuelta por un lado y por otro y no no le lleva entonces pero sí, pues, lo demás, todo bien o sea 
de necesito dedicación y muchas veces no tengo el tiempo suficiente como para para dedicarme solo a eso entonces Ok, sí, es, es verdad, a veces pues es, hace falta un poco de tiempo, en la medida que se pueda, pues se puede tratar de ir haciendo. Uh... es que el problema es que en el en un principio en los primeros módulos tenía eh, la facilidad de hacer trabajo pero el trabajo pues, A veces por otras personas se volvió complicado, entonces yo preferí, ¿no? Porque en el trabajo lo eh, adelantaba y me iba bien, pero por otras personas que abusaban hacer otras cosas, tuvimos que sufrir los demás, entonces ya no. Mm, ahí sí. sí, eso sucede a veces, pues, pero bueno, yo he visto que sí habla bastante bien, que pronuncia bastante bien, entonces creo que se sigue viniendo las clases y uh, sigue evolucionando, todo va a ir bien. So, I guess everything will be fine. Espero que sí, porque es mi meta eh, llegar a ser bueno, ser perfecto, pues, poder desenvolverme con otra persona que sea que hable inglés. Claro, definitivamente, es la meta. Entonces, cualquier cosa, estamos a la orden. Si tiene preguntas, las puede hacer en la clase, las puede hacer al chat del grupo o al chat individual y pues con gusto le llevamos. Ok, muchas gracias. Bueno, no le quito más tiempo entonces para que descanse y que le salga bien todo a su mamá. Ok, muchas gracias. Feliz noche, good night, see you on Buenas Monday. noches, gracias.